Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to export shadows from Revit. Now, this is important. If you usually create your architectural diagrams and visualizations in a 2D software like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, instead of redrawing shadows in the software, you can just export and use shadows from your Revit model. I'll be working with this museum project for my undergraduate degree. As you can see, it has a fairly simple structure. Now go to the view you would want to export. It can be an elevation or a site plan. In my case, it's a 3D view. So I'll go to my floor plan and create a new 3D view by selecting the camera from the 3D dropdown, clicking and dragging to create a new view. I'll go ahead and adjust the crop boundaries of my 3D view. Next, I'll hide the elements I don't want to be visible in the final product. Now I'll adjust the shape and direction of the shadows. To do that, I'll go to the bottom of the window and click on this icon to turn on the shadow. Then I'll click on this icon, select Solar Study to enter the Solar Study mode. Next, I'll adjust these two sliders to change the position of the sun, thereby adjusting the direction and shape of the shadow. After that, I'll adjust my camera height and target height from the properties panel. When your view is ready for export, place it on the sheet. Go to the project browser, scroll down to sheets, right click and select the sheet size that you want. Then drag and drop the view you want to export. Here I'm just adjusting the size of my 3D view on the sheet so that it covers a bigger area. Then go back to the view, turn off shadow. I'm exporting to CAD. You can also export to PDF, JPEGs, or PNG, depending on the software you're using. After the export is done, go back and turn on the shadows. Then select everything in your view, override graphics, and change projection lines to white. You can do this by right clicking, choose override graphics, then change projection lines to white. As you can see, because the background is white, it looks like all the line works have disappeared. But if you look closely, there are still some black lines in the view, like the door frames, railings, and the parkings. You can change that by going to object style, find, for example, door, select all the subcategories, and change its line color to white. Repeat the same thing for the railings and the parking. After you are done, everything in the view should look invisible, just the shadows. Next, click on the cube icon on the bottom of the window. Select graphic display options. Go to the light settings. Make the shadow 100 to make it extremely black. Apply the settings and close the window. Hide the crop boundary and export the sheet again. For exporting the shadows, I use image format. I'll select the sheet from my list of sheets here. Then I'll change the zoom percentage to 100%. After it's done exporting, this is what it should look like. Return to the Revit model. Go back to your graphic display option. Then turn off the cast shadows and turn on ambience shadow. Apply the settings and re-export the sheet again with the ambience shadow alone. 
when I'm working with a time constraint, I don't usually export ambient shadow. The cast shadow is fine for most of the diagrams I do for my presentation boards. After the ambient shadow has exported, this is what it should look like. It's an image file, like the cast shadow. Next, I'll open my base image, which I exported to a card format in Illustrator. I'll select scale to fit out board option. Illustrator reads layers, so all the elements in the drawing have been grouped to different layers and with different colors. So I'll select all line work, go to properties panel and change all stroke to black. Then I'll clean up some unnecessary or jagged lines. After that, I'll readjust my ads board to the size of my A3 sheet. Place the cast shadow and ambient shadow image into the Illustrator file. Put them on a new layer and rename. Take your cast shadow, scale it to fit the base image and adjust the opacity of the shadow. Repeat the same process with the ambient shadow to give it more depth. The second way I use shadow images in Illustrator is by using image trace option to turn the images into vector, thereby making it easy to edit the edges. Create a duplicate of the shadow and reset it to its original format, remove the blend modes and opacity settings. Then go to the image trace option on the properties panel. There's a list of options available. For my cast shadow, I usually use the silhouette preset, but for my ambient shadow, I use shades of gray. Try different presets to see which one works better for your drawing. Expand and ungroup. Select the unwanted part of the image and delete it. Then group the remaining parts that you'll be needing together. As you can see here, the shadow is standing alone and it's also a vector file that is editable. Repeat the same process for the ambient shadow. Here I'm showing you an example of why I don't use the silhouette preset for my ambience shadow. You can also layer these shadows to create more depth, adjust the opacities and blending modes. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you and I'll see you on the next video.